passion is what drives us to go from thinking about something to actually doing it. And in Sonam Kalra's case, this meant using music to create a space where people of different backgrounds could share a mystical experience. I met up with Sonam Kalra to find out more about what inspired her to create the Sufi Gospel Project. The annual Shared History Festival celebrates the cultural links between India and South Africa. And the Sufi Gospel Project was one of this year's highlights. Sonam Kalra is a singer, songwriter and composer who's been highly influenced by Sufi teachings. Tonight I'm lucky enough to watch her live in performance with her Sufi Gospel Project. Zaki got some background on shared history from the festival spokesperson, Brenda Deva Sakalaridas. I believe that the Shared History Festival is an incredibly valuable and important festival on our cultural calendar. Not only do we look at contemporary Indian art, but we go back to, to the ancient art forms. This year we open with the beautiful Sonam Kolra and her Sufi Gospel Project. And it is such a significant and healing way to open our festival. Within the broad family of Islam, Sufism represents the inner mystical dimension. This school of thought originated in Western Asia and Sufism has since spread throughout the world, including India. Although not a Muslim herself, Sonam was drawn to its mysticism and as the idea for this project evolved, she began to meld Indian classical styles with a gospel music element. The lyrics follow a similarly inclusive approach, featuring a mix of Indian spiritual texts and Western poetry. When and how were you drawn to the life of music? I started learning music when I was really young. I think I was about four or five. I started learning Indian classical music. But I didn't pursue it. I did learn from a lot of teachers. But I don't think I was serious about it. Then I worked in advertising. So I sort of kept it at the back. And I think part of the reason I did that was because I only wanted to do it when I could be good at it. And then that changed because theatre helped me understand that I was searching for the wrong thing, that you don't have to search for perfection, you have to search for truth, and there will be beauty in truth. And at the turn of the millennium, quite dramatically, on the last day, I quit my job, and then I never, ever went back. How would you describe your music and its meaning to you on a personal level? I would describe my music as a blend of the many voices of faith. In an attempt to create one universal voice of faith, I blend poetry from different languages, music from different genres, what it means to me, it's my life, um, it's my breath, it's everything that I do, everything that I want to do, it's, it's my soul. describe the Indian element in your sound? That's where we start from. Our roots are Indian. Our, our sensibility will be Indian in many ways and I'm very proud of that Indian sensibility as well. There's so much, there is so much beauty in Indian instruments and Indian music. So it's really easy in many ways to start from that ground and then to, to sort of veer off to different things and, and come back because it's all, it's, it's a wonderful foundation to have. When I'm in trouble and I have no friends I know you'll stay with me until the end Everybody asks me how I know I smile at them and say they told me so That's why no Where do you find inspiration for your music? I find inspiration in everything. I find inspiration from pain. I find inspiration from joy. I find inspiration from the conversation I'll have with a friend. I feel like I'm constantly being moved and touched and I think that it, that comes from allowing yourself to be open, to feel everything, pain as well as joy. How did you come up with the concept for the Sufi Gospel Project? I started singing jazz and I was a sort of self-taught jazz musician. So everyone said, oh, but you've studied Indian classical music. And through jazz, then I found gospel. Then I got invited to the Dargah, which is a Sufi shrine of a Sufi saint called Inayat Khan to sing. And that's when I thought a Sikh girl who sings Christian music gets invited to a seemingly Islamic space and the world is telling me to do something. People were so kind, we got a standing ovation and then the auditorium went absolutely quiet. This old lady, she must have been like 85 or 
even 90, I don't know, she literally walked to the front of the stage really slowly and loudly in the silence of the room after people had stopped clapping, she said, my child, straight from your lips to God's heart. And that just reiterates my faith in the goodness of people and the fact that we all really want to say the same thing and we want the same thing, love and peace, you know. What is the underlying message that you want to get across through your music? Each of us has our own truth and each truth is just as valid. And we should learn to be not tolerant of that truth, but accepting. So learn to accept people and realize that you're calling out to the same God, you're wanting the same things. And I'm hoping for peace through the music. It was amazing to, to come to a show and to experience joy and peace through the music. To experience joy and peace in the music sums up the Sufi Gospel Project experience so perfectly. And this was definitely one of the highlights of the Shared History Festival. This year saw the 10th edition of the festival and what a decade it has been. Presented under the auspices of the High Commission of India, the event has brought the amazing energy, variety and entertainment of the Indian cultural experience to South Africa.